before we begin, thank you very much to Paradox Saber 54 for joining the Patreon campaign. Love to see a familiar name coming back. Thank you very much for returning. Thank you once again for your support. Means the world to me. Uh, yeah, it is uh, always a special thing. Uh, like, I never get tired of, like, realizing, like, people actually want to see me continue. People actually want to support this. Okay, <laughs> then we will keep going. Uh, so yeah, as long as you guys are willing to pitch this in, as, as long as you guys are willing to support me, however you support me, I am willing to keep going for you guys. Thank you so much for letting me do this and letting me get away with living like this. All right, so let's prepare to gush for, let's be honest with my videos, probably at least 20 minutes over the new Missing Link Convoy. So We've talked about this in news roundups. We've had the teasers. We've had the super blurry, messy, leaked images. Now everything is out there. Uh, has uh, Takara has put out its promotional video that kind of shows off a little bit of how the toy works. Um, we've seen a ton more detail shots now. We have a full translation of the like the descriptive blurb for it, which gives us a lot of information. It's been seen at toy shows, which gives us even more information. So I've compiled everything into one little nugget of information here on the YouTubes for you, for your convenience. And for those who just want to get a quick rundown, let's be honest with my videos, quick is a generous term. Uh, to actually give you a whole rundown of exactly what this toy is. So, it is a 40th anniversary piece. It is coming out in 2024. I believe in March is when this is slated to drop for most of the import shops. Though, uh, this uh, does seem to list February. So, it's going to it's gonna depend on where you are regionally. Um, but yeah, this is the 40th anniversary piece, and it is a fully reimagined version of the original G1 Convoy toy, complete with the original transformation, aesthetic details, etc. And a whole bunch that has been upgraded and improved upon. So, we have a lot to cover here. We got a lot to cover. So, uh, let us start with said information blurb. And I know this is quite small on your screen, so uh, I am going to read it out of my own accord. Uh, just so you guys know exactly what's, what's being said here. All right, starting at the top, because starting in the middle would be confusing. Lost Dreams Link Beyond Time, a virtual reprint that may have existed in that era. The Missing Link series is launched to commemorate the, the 40th anniversary of the birth of Transformers. What if the original convoy was a fully posable specification? Number one, this is machine translated. No, I will not. Uh, correct it as I go. You will take it for face value. Uh, also, to hear the words series be included in this, that gives me hope. That gives me a lot of hope for what else we're going to get out of this, because it seems like, yeah, they might actually be going all in. Uh, while following the original convoy toy in terms of size, deformation pattern, and basic composition using some die-cast alloys, the ideal convoy commander toy has been updated with movable joints for posing and gimmicks drawn in animation. So, so we do confirm, this thing is using die-cast parts. It's most likely the same die-cast parts as the original, which would be the toes and uh, the chest, or at least uh, the top portion of the chest that contains the windshields. Uh, even the packaging and accessories are a thorough tribute to those days. A, and more than a reprinted version, the impression of opening the Transformers product in the 1980s is revived. Uh, I'll show you the box here in a bit. Uh, they didn't show it off in a tremendous way, but we do know what it looks like. It can be completely transformed to be stored inside without moving it. It can be completely transformed to be stored inside without removing it. Inside what? <laughs> Um, I, I mean, um, I, I, I guess it, I guess it's just, it's, I think machine translation, um, pretty sure it means that it's supposed to be like, um, you know, it can be completely transformed, uh, and it, it is a self-contained transformation with no removable parts. That's what I'm going for here. Uh, in addition, each joint, which was limited to posing at the time can be changed to movable. They have been changed to movable. They, it's not can, they have allowing you to freely pose it. The matrix can be stored. The newly designed fists have movable fingers so you can remove the matrix and hold it in your hand. 
I certainly hope something that fits inside Optimus Prime's chest would fit in my hand. I would be concerned otherwise. Uh, that would be very tiny hands, which would make life very difficult. The anti-aircraft gun in the container can be separated from the trailer and rolled to run, just like in the anime. Anti-aircraft gun is something that I've never heard the repair drone referred to as. Though I guess the one time I ever saw it used like that in the anime, yeah, uh, that's what it did. It shot things out of the air. Uh, by flipping the rear part of Roller, the warning light drawn in the anime will appear. Uh, the laser rifle has been changed to a specification where the original grip part is inserted into the fist. Uh, I'll show you that here in a bit too. Uh, the weapon Energy Axe, this is Energon Axe, which is impressive in the anime's opening video, the first episode, is also included and can be attached to the fist. In addition, a red transparent secret film is included. So secret film doesn't mean like spy footage has been included with this toy. No, it means the decoder for the tech specs are also included. Uh, and the play that can be deciphered by overlaying it on the spec chart printed on the back of the packaging is restored. The familiar secret emblem is also attached to the robot body. That's the rub sign. And when you warm it with your finger, the corpse mark will appear. The corpse mark. Uh, now, I know, I, now, it means like Army Corps. But it's just the way that the translation phrased it. And I know that's not how corpse is spelled, but it's just it's, it's weird. Uh, the robot body was sculpted into a three-dimensional form, uh, I sh which was a two-dimensional expression with stickers at the time. I'll show you that in a mi minute, too. An operational stand joint hole can be added to the back of convoy, allowing you to decorate it with an action pose. Uh, so there's compatibility for a posable stand in this toy, apparently. I will note that no official pictures of the backside exist, so we can't really see that. But we get I'll give you some idea. Uh, two types of license plate user users. Two types of license plate users stickers that can reproduce the Japanese box art and overseas box art uh, of the time have been added, and a newly designed collector card collection card is also included. So that's the rough rundown of it all. Did everyone follow that? Okay, so now that we've gotten the insanity out of the way, let's actually look at this thing. So, first off, comparison to the original toy, and it is a beautiful recreation rendition. It's the same size, same proportions. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of details that are a lot clearer, like the eyes. Uh, so some of the sculpting has been cleaned up, though it does seem like it's been refined a lot. In particular, if you take a look at these pictures up close, you're going to find that um, a lot of details, especially on the diecast chest, are far sharper than they were on the original toy. So the impression is there, but they have upgraded even that. It's also important to note, uh, this seems to be 100% new tooling on the Optimus Prime section of the toy. So there is no like reuse of G1 parts here. It's all 100% new until we get to the trailer. We'll explain that here in a bit. Uh, let's take a look at the anime version first, which includes those said stickers that turn the bumper sticker, the, the, the bumper into the anime version. And it looks beautiful. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful with the brighter colors. Um, yeah, uh, so notable changes here. The noteworthy things to talk about are the brighter shades of red and blue that are used for this one, the blue in particular, the silver on the toes, which is accurate to the animation model, the yellow stickering on the chrome, because you can't really paint on top of the chrome, so stickers are what are going to work for that. Um, the blue eyes of the anime are painted in, as well as the blue windshield tinting. So this is probably the version you want to go for not only on a budget because it does not include the trailer and all the extra accessories but it also is going to uh, be really good for those who are collecting the walmart reissues that are also colored to be animation accurate and are painted rather than stickered so it's going to be a nice pairing with those if uh if you want to add to that collection uh here we can also see that yes the rifle has been modified now the original g1 rifle if you haven't seen it the the peg to hold on to it is in the middle. You can see it right there uh, on uh, on that version of it. And the actual handle is molded to look like an actual rifle handle, which obviously is not going to fit into a 5 millimeter port. So it's nice that they corrected that. 
Uh, along with things like, you know, the hands don't have to be removed and all that, too. That's also nice. Uh, truck mode looks great. Uh, truck mode is... Unless you know exactly what to look for, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell this from the G1 just by the first look at it. It's that close to how the original toy looked, which is what they were going for and actually works really, really well. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Very nice all the way around. There's part of me that almost wishes that there was no chrome on the anime accurate version, just so it's even more anime accurate. But you know what? That changes a few uh, tolerances. That changes a few, like, uh, details, etc. We'll accept chrome. We'll accept the chrome. It's not a huge deal. Uh, if we take a look more, yeah, you can see the range of posability on this thing is insane. He can actually do the pose. He can do, the like, the flying into the battle from the 86 movie pose. Um, that's great to see. The Energon Axe, it fits over. It looks like it's hinged at the bottom, so you pop it on top and then close it around his hand. That works pretty well. Deep ankle tilts, by the way. Really deep ankle tilts, by the way. Uh, there's also another detail here. There's, there's an ab crunch to the toy, which uh, is hard to show here. The Matrix of Leadership itself. Now, the Matrix itself uh, is not chrome. It's metallic paints. So that looks really, really nice, and that gets you more cartoon accurate, but it still has a translucent blue core. Good to see. And yes, he can actually hold it in his hands. That's actually really rare for a Matrix of Leadership toy. So it's actually really good to actually notice that detail. Uh, now, let's move on to the toy accurate version. And this, this is my personal preference. This is the one I have pre-ordered because I think the appeal to this is the idea that it is the G1 toy fully realized and fully upgraded as into a modern toy. So for me, I want it to look like the original toy as much as absolutely possible. So what does that entail? So for starters, truck mode looks great. Truck mode looks absolutely great. Now, important to note here, the trailer seems to be a straight reissue of the original G1 trailer. They didn't add anything to it. No extra, extra functionality was put in. To be fair... There's nothing you could really do to change it. It is exactly what it is. And because it was never really utilized that much in the show, you don't really have all that much to do that you could upgrade it, you know? So it's just going to be what it is. You know, it's just going to be a box that Optimus Prime totes around with him. But to be fair, if you're going by like the original G1 toys look, I think having, like, a piece of the original G1 toy that's fully compatible and aesthetically matches still kind of drives it home just how hard they tried to get all the original look of the cab section correct. Uh, looking at, yep, still fully transforms. No big surprise there. Uh, it gets into a little bit more surprising. Remember they said that the anti-aircraft uh, gun could actually be removed and come out on its own. Yes, there is a scene in G1, uh, I believe, Fire in the Sky... I want to say, I want to say, yeah, uh, where, yeah, that section can be seen coming out of the trailer from the back door to actually uh, fire. So that is actually accurate. Now, if it could attach onto roller and just have like a big rolly tanky thing, that would be super cool. And not for seeing that happening, though. But still, nice to know all the original functionality is there. He is just as poseable. There we get a good look at the ab crunch on this thing. Now, it doesn't look like the waist articulates on it, which is kind of a downer, but the, the G1 Prime with an ab crunch is hilarious to me. I actually really like that. It doesn't look like the chest can open like the original one. Now, obviously, that's meant for it. Well, well I guess I guess I just made a lie of myself because, yeah, we, we see, the, we see the, uh, the matrix that can come in and out. I don't see how the door works, though. I don't see the hinge that the original one was sitting on. So now I'm curious how that functions, because they didn't really show that off. Uh, well, maybe they did. Let's let's keep browsing photos here. Um, the note that the thing I take away from like the posability that we see in this is like the one point that worries me a little bit, which is the fact that he has those awkward shoulders where it's not proper universal shoulder motion. Uh, which is weird because it feels like th that big block of a shoulder, they could have fit that in. But it's that really weird, awkward, like uh, like he's got like a hinge that moves his arm outward. And then he just has like a swivel right right here for the arm, which is still a lot of range. But it doesn't feel as good as a universal shoulder joint. And it's going to lead to some awkward poses. So that's a 
that's a bit of a downer. So I think they could have done better there. But then again, we don't know the full range of engineering on this because we need to actually see it transformed to get an idea of that. Uh, so maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's the best they can do. Don't know. Here's the detail I want to point out. They mentioned this uh, in the blurb. There's no stickers on this thing whatsoever. Uh, unless you're using the animation version and then you need the stickers for the bumper. But none of the detail stickers on the convoy section of the toy are stickers. It's all sculpted three-dimensional detail that is then painted in very minute detail. That's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. I love seeing that. Like That really, like that, you know, that's the kind of thing that really pushes us into being like, a very premium item when they're including levels of detail like that. Now, now I'm really intrigued by this. I mean, I was before. I love the idea. But now, like, now it feels premium. Now it feels really good. So there he is doing the pose. Yep. And you'll notice, like, the knees and the toes, they also have the same details painted in. You can see him on the anime version, too. They just painted the silver over it. Uh, let's see, uh, there he is with the axe. The axe looks a little bit more transparent in this version. Uh, of course, in the show, it was opaque, so that makes sense. Uh, and you can also see, like, okay, so yes, the chest does open up like the original. Uh, but also, a uh, little more details to notice. The blue is darker, of course, because toy accurate, and the eyes are yellow. So again, hitting all the notes of the original toy rather than the show. And there he is doing the original box art. Can you imagine, like, the original box art uh, is like the limit like even that is not what the original optimus prime could do so like that's actually kind of cool it's actually kind of cool to see and there is your accessory breakdown you've got like remember all this is just original tooling so the missiles the roller with the individual wheels all of that is how the original prime came you even get the hose which is sure to break down over time but hey we appreciate it. it's there uh, yeah, tons of stuff. Now, for a few extra little details before we go here, they did point out that the emblem does work. So the, the heat-sensitive sticker is there, fully functional. I think it shouldn't be on the anime-accurate version, but I think it is. I think it is. Uh, could be wrong. Uh, to get a shot of inside the trailer, we have to go to a shot from a toy convention, which shows that the stickers for the ceiling, or rather the wall panels what they form into for the trailer mode that actually works uh they've they've included all of the original stickers there so you get lots of detail going on okay that's cool like that here's an interesting shot because this is where we can actually see the back side of the toy and i don't see the port that they talked about for attaching a display stand i do see that the gap on the original toy is still present uh, it seems to be, it also seems to be as is like the overhang of panel on the original toy. So none of that got cleaned up. The rear is as ugly as the original toy was. They've just added more articulation, which I think is fantastic to do. I think, I think that's the right approach here. Uh, and then, yeah, there is what the box art is going to look like. And yeah, right. There's some recreation of the original box art. There's the brand new G1 style box art doing the jump pose, which again shows his waist rotating, which it can't do. Uh, <laughs> unless like none of these photos showed it off, but it doesn't look like he has a waist joint. So this package art, like the original package art, is lying, which I find amusing that that tradition continues. What's surprising about this, I guess it shouldn't, but it kind of does, is the fact that a lot of online retailers that don't normally get imports from Takara are actually going to stock this. Like my friends over at Entertainment Earth, where you can visit them in the description below my video. There's a link there uh, that will take you to their site. Using that link does support the channel, by the way, and I do appreciate everyone who uses it to get your Transformer goodness. Also, it does get you 10% off on an in-stock order and will automatically apply their current free shipping deal if you qualify. I have been doing this for 19 minutes just so we can get to the cheap plug. But again, it is worthy to note that, like I said, there's a lot of U.S. retailers that are stocking this online that don't normally import things from Takara. And I think that just goes to show not only how much Takara is trying to get the toy out there to collectors and how much demand they expect for it, but also just how much, you know, people realize, uh, even the stores realize, this is going to be a big deal. 
This toy is a big, big deal. And if it becomes a full line, even bigger. So, welcome to the age of Missing Link Transformers. We eagerly anticipate the release of these next year to really feel what they are going to be like. And who knows, we might find out more on the way before then. Fingers crossed. So, that's everything we've got. Like I said, I knew it'd probably go about 20 minutes because that's kind of how I like to ramble. But I really wanted to talk about this thing. Now we got like the full everything about it and it, it looks absolutely amazing. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you're now educated as to what to expect. Um, also, I'm going to mention real quick, um, because they are putting so much effort into this and because you got so many little details and so many extra uh, tricks going on, I honestly think it's worth the price. I mean, knowing that the G1, like the original G1 toy now costs like 50 bucks to release, I think 70 for all those extra parts and like incredible level of paint and detail going on. I think that's okay. I don't think that's too bad on the pricing for a premium item. So that's the last little nugget I'll leave you on. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. I'm like, I think you guys got this. I will back away, and I will see you all later. You've got this handled. <laughs> Alafi's like, really? You're not going to help me? Like, it's fine now. It's like, these disgusting <laughs> creatures breathing down my neck, and you're all just like, I believe in you. You got this. All right, you seem to have this. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs>